Morning again to those who just joined. There's a few people still coming in. Welcome to the uh, Data Analytics and Visualization Power BI uh, webinar. In fact, welcome to the, the series for Confident Decision Making with Power BI. This is the first of four webinars we've got planned in the series that uh, we'll be taking you through. Today, we're focusing on uh, the basics around data analytics and visualization with Power BI. This is a level 100 session, so I'm going to cover um, some high level information about Power BI itself, uh, a little bit more around um, the deployment and license scenarios you need to take into consideration, uh, as well as then other considerations you need to take into account when going through an analytics journey. The ones we're coming up, we'll go more deeper into uh, governance processes with Power BI, including how you could use Azure Purview to provide the governance over your analytics uh, platform. In the third the series, we go to more machine learning, how to utilize data in new ways, to gather insights. And then in the last session in the early December, we'll be looking at some of the tools and framework um, to help modernize and migrate your to, and benefit is when you migrate data to Azure, the benefits you get out of having your data uh, in the cloud for that. Just some housekeeping as we uh, uh, before we get going. If you have any questions during the session, please use the QA panel within the uh, Teams client. Uh, we have uh, members of our events team uh, there to assist with any challenge you have with the um, with the session itself. If there's anything then for uh, my colleague and I, we will have uh, times for Q&A during and certainly at the end as well. The session will be recorded and we'll include a, a lot of links we have referred to today in, in, uh, in, the, in the webinar and those will be bundled up and sent to you at the end of the, with the recording and, uh, and linked to the recording once that's ready as well. And finally, we have a special offer at the end for everyone who's attending today and encourage you to stay to for that uh, to like, help you with your own analytics journey. So with that, um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Peter Hayden. I am the Solution Sales Specialist at Data3 for Data and Analytics. And it's my pleasure to be hosting the session. And joining me today is my colleague, Blair Franklin. Morning, Blair. Good morning, Peter. So Blair is our technical solution specialist uh, and he provides a lot of the uh, technical advice and architecture to our clients uh, to help them uh, with, with their analytics journey as well. And so we'll you'll hear from both of us uh, this morning. Uh, I've covered off a little bit of the agenda. For those who just joined, we're talking about Power BI generally, um, some of the deployment and license scenarios, Power BI, those considerations beyond just deploying the tool, um, the special offer I just mentioned and then the Q&A. So, We'll get into it and I'll get us going. I'll hand over to, to Blair to please um, yeah, tell us a bit about Power BI and, um, and, and what we can do with it. Okay, so the, ne the next few slides, we're gonna sort of jump around about what is, what is Power BI and the sort of, sort of things you can do with Power BI and why you should be using it. So if we start with the the what, the what is Power BI? So at its core, Power BI is a business intelligence tool used for reporting dashboarding. But when you start to take um, sort of a wider glance towards it, you see it's a, it's a way to expose your data with um, governance, security, and sort of your different audiences in mind. And it's also a way to apply any business rules you have. You can connect to your data from uh, multiple sources, you can transform your data and you can build that model or what's commonly known as the data set. If you've got a, pre if you've got a premium license, you can perform um, machine learning functions against that data set as well. You can create your graphs, your reports and your dashboards, and you can share those reports with other users through a, a number of different um, sort of platforms. And next slide, please. So the, the why, the why use Power BI? It's a um, SaaS product. So for anyone who's not familiar with that terminology, it means software as a service. So it means you don't have to worry about the infrastructure. You don't have to worry about software patching. That is all taken care of and, uh, behind the scenes. All you have to worry about is creating your reports, creating your data sets, just the bits you really care about. You've got a flexible pricing model. We will go further into what your pricing models options are on the next couple of slides. Um, you, as I said, 
Billy, you can source from multiple locations, so different databases. Um, these could be SQL, Oracle, SAP, um, files, so CSV, Excel, or if you don't want to specify individual files, you can do folder locations if you've got a number of files which are in a similar sort of format. So a folder location might be a SharePoint. I, I, you might want to pull from a SharePoint location and get everything which fits in a similar naming convention with a similar format. A big one is it's part of the Microsoft landscape. But what I mean by that is it'll, it is natively going to integrate with Azure Active Directory. Azure Active Directory manages all your logins, all your security, who can see what, and Power BI can make use of that. It also integrates with um, other, other platforms like Power Platform or Power Automate and SharePoint. It is very easy to get started. It's a, it only takes a couple of days to actually spin up and configure the Power BI workspace and the tenancy itself. And that gives you a, a good starting point to actually get going. And as shown by the, um, the diagram there, it's a Gartner leader for both vision and ability to execute. Uh, next slide, please. So, Matt, you've kind of seen a pattern here. What can we do with Power BI? We have out of the box visuals. So, that's that um, picture there. Those are your out of the box visuals. You've got community built visuals. There's far too many here to list. And if for some reason the out of the box or the community built do not meet your requirements and you need something very left field and you know a bit of R or a bit of Python, you can actually go create your own visuals as well. So that, that gives you complete control over what visuals you actually want to use and how you want them to look and perform. And you, yeah, you have complete choice of your visual type. It integrates with um, existing products. So, but what I mean by this is, I kind of touched on it earlier. It integrates with your Active Directory, well, Azure Active Directory for your security. It integrates with um, Power Platform. So it might be within, PowerPoint, uh, within um, Power BI, you want to press a button and you want it to go do something. That, can kick, that could kick off Power Platform and, and it could go do some processes. It also integrates natively, natively with SharePoint. So you could use SharePoint as your, your security controls and then you in, embed your reports. You can create your Power BI reports directly off a transactional system if you need real-time reporting or off something like CSV or Excel if you need real-time. Or if you've got that data warehouse or you, ha or, or you have the more complex reporting um, that you need to take place, then you can use that back end to uh, transform the data and get it in the format you need and then have Power BI, Power BI off that and put the data and do a lot more. Within Power BI, you've got, a, you've got a very good security model. You've got row, column, and object level. And as touched on before with sharing, you can share through the Power BI app, through SharePoint, or you can actually share art through any external website you want, through um, things like a iframe or using the um, embed model. Uh, next slide, please. So what this diagram shows, it's kind of a reference architecture for your Power BI landscape. So on the, on the left, you have your sources. So this could be this could be a number of files and databases. If it's an on-prem location where you have the gateway, so um, you have a, a computer on the on-prem network with a uh, application which lets Power BI see your databases. So that's how it, that's how Power BI gets access to your on-prem network. The next one, the next level here is a shared data set or shared data set workspace. So the, the dotted boxes are workspaces. Within that shared data set, you have multiple, uh, within that shared data set workspace, you have multiple data sets. So these data sets are, think of them as sort of business areas or subject areas. 
And then the next one across is the reporting workspaces. So in this example, we have corporate technology and finance. You can see from the corporate one, by having a shared data set for corporate, we have two reports, but only one data set. So we don't have to recreate the world each time. By doing this, you can, you can control a lot of your security, you can control your naming standards, and you can control who can actually do things as well. At the data set level, we, this might be maintained by the developers. So within that data set, we specify the measures and calculated columns. We specify the naming conventions. We specify all the business rules. We also specify what workspaces can access what data sets. So even though we have three data sets in there, the corporate workspace or the users who can access corporate workspace can only access data set one. Now, when that now when we move into workspaces, this this becomes more of a data analyst or a report to de, report developer, more of a business function, where you can you don't have to worry about setting up the model, doing the naming standards, doing the sort of the technical bits. You can focus more on what visualizations are important to you. How do you want this report or this dashboard to actually look? And next slide, please. Now, I won't jump into these too deep, but what I have here is just a few examples of some of the visualizations that you can actually create. So the link down the left is where I got these from. It's just the um, Power BI community. There's a lot more there, but I thought these ones were very relevant. So you can see up in, um, up in the left, that's the COVID-19 New South Wales transport impact. So we've, we've got a few graphs on there which kind of show what the impact has been. Um, and then up top right, you've got a property developer sales. So you can you can track how your sales are going. And then the one down the bottom I thought was interesting. This is um, FIFA Ukraine versus Korea game. And when you look at look at those, that is the visual there is an actual playing field. It's an actual soccer match. Then jump to the next slide. So the takeaways of us, as Gartner sort of pointed out, Power BI is a leader in its area. It is outperforming the rest. You have security integrated. You have row level, col um, row level, column level, and object level. You have a lot of flexibility around what sort what sort of visualizations you can use. You also have flexibility around how you want to configure your and configure your actual reporting workspaces. So that could be by business unit or it could be by project. It's a it's cost effective. You have you have a few different costly models where you can choose the best one for your business. And it's better together. It, it is part of a Microsoft platform, so it is going to natively integrate. And of course, it's one of those products where it is very easy to learn. You can do the basics with just a couple of days of training, but it is very hard to master. So yes, you can create reports over a couple of days, but if you want to be jumping in and creating custom visuals using R or Python, that takes a lot more expertise. Great, thanks, Blair. That was a great low view around a bit about the Power BI service as well. I think um, you can believe on that community site you share, where you're able to interact with those visuals, aren't you? And, and try them out, see them in real, 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 yeah, uh, real time. They are fully interactive. If you go to that website, you can actually click around and you can see a lot of what can be done. So we'll send that out um, uh, as, a, as a follow up to uh, the, the today's session. Um, that's a good way. If you are new to Power BI or want to understand what you know, what's it look and feel like, that's a great way to do it. Um, really easy like, way for you to start you know, investing or thinking about how you might bring that into your organisation. So we're going to change gear now and look at some of the deployment and licensing scenarios that uh, we see with our, our, our clients. And yeah, you know, we've got clients at every stage of the journey. Um, 
those that have, um, you know, not using Power BI or maybe using other, other, other products, looking to go towards Power BI, maybe they're, they're using it in, in, in small teams but haven't deployed across the enterprise, or maybe they've got to a maturity point and want to know what their options are. And this leads me to the number one question that uh, uh, we get um, from uh, our clients through our account teams, and that starts with how do I best license Power BI? Because there are a lot of options, but it's not quite a simple answer. And it really depends on a couple of things. One is around what are the business drivers? What's the organization look to achieve by leveraging Power BI as an analytics platform? Now, what are some of those use cases and how you want it to be used? Who's the audience? What do you want to bring together? Where's the data coming from? Um, are there any technical constraints that need to be considered? How does it fit in with a broader you know, technical strategy or architecture? And then you've got economic constraints as well. Of course, um, you know, there's, there's an investment of some kind with anything you're doing in an organization. How do you best use that and get the bang for, bang for buck? With a lot of the, we're seeing a lot of uh, interest around how we, how, um, the clients know how do we you know, do data-driven insights or self-service BI, um, and that will depend on, on then you know, what you've got available budget-wise and the value you get from that as well to be considered. And they're, they're not everything, but they're the they're four sort of key categories that we think about around well, how do you how should we best uh, deploy and license Power BI. Now, when I talk about what is Power BI and, and why you should use it, but another, other I guess common common sort of Pieces. Where is Power BI? Is it something that's um, you know uh, in front of me on a on a desktop? Is it in the cloud? It, it's actually in a few different places in terms of where you can experience it. And I'll try and break that down for you. The first is um, Power BI can be deployed very simply on a on a Windows computer, and that's really the authoring pane that you can uh, you know start bringing some data in and start doing doing things. That's really personal um, BI. Um, if you're consuming like those, those examples that Blair showed you or in, within your own corporate you know, environment, um, anyone with a web browser, regardless of operating system, certainly can view that as well by logging into the, the service. Now, that service that runs that when you publish your, uh, the reports um, can live in, in, in one of two places. One is in what we call the Power BI Online or Power BI Service, and those terms are used interchangeably. That's that SaaS service that Blair spoke about. And if you have an Office 365 tenancy, it does certainly tie into that, so you can administer users um, effectively. Uh, and you'll start too with that gateway that uh, Blair mentioned, uh, connect to your on-premises or your corporate um, data source as well that you have in your corporate network. Now, if as well as the cloud, there are options also to deploy within your corporate network, and an on-premise deployment is one of those. And that is perhaps called Power BI Report Server. And we'll go a bit more detail into that. It's not a common one, but some clients do need to have this sort of flexibility, but it doesn't have all the features you get when you go fully to the cloud. Uh, and another great benefit of where you can consume Power BI is on your mobile device. So there's a lot of demand to actually access information anywhere. There's a purpose built Android and iOS apps that you can use to access the published reports, whether in the cloud or on premises as well. Um, so let's have a look at you know, the, the deployments. Now, in the, in the link here that we'll send out is a really detailed deployment guide, and there's about 12 different scenarios that they will take you through, but there's, there's probably, this what I've tried to do is put together the typical sort of deployment that we'd think about for a Power BI Online into the cloud deployment. And it all starts with your data sources. So you'll have relational data, you'll have data in flat files, or data might through other products available to you in the cloud whether it's an Azure or, or, or other products like you know, salesforce.com, for example. A lot of connectors. Um, now, with that Power BI report, uh, Power BI desktop uh, edition rather, a report designer um, will use that to query the data, um, which might be in those data sources or data warehouse, um, bring model that data, prepare that data, and then generate the first report. And that's great for, uh, from an authoring type of view, designer point of view, but how do we then share that and make that available? And that's when we need to then, that Power BI service, you know, we've then been published to that. With the Power BI service, and you saw in that diagram that Blair explained before, we have these workspaces that users will, will, will interact with. There's administration and membership assigned to that. 
And within a workspace, you get a lot of features. And we talk workspace, there's also apps, which is, a, I guess, a, a published works, special purpose workspace you, you can then use in the organization to share that broadly. They share a lot of common things. So the security model is one of those um, through the access controls that Blair touched on. The, the bringing of, the, of publishing the data and data sets that you need, that you need into Power BI, and the flows to help you support the, uh, the bringing of data together. You then have reports and you can publish, create dashboards on top of that, that they can be used um, for either, yeah, you know, so the executive level dashboards or dashboards from your, from your mobile device. Um, and you'll have flexibility to have individualized customer, individual or customized versions of those. Um, and there's things like subscriptions, subscribing to updates or alerts when values change in data, as well as a bit of print, export and download as well. And there's lots of other features. These are the core elements. Um, and then, the, the, the people in your organization access that. So the workspace app viewers can then uh, access that via URL and consume that data as well. And then finally, to connect, uh, securely connect your data, there's on-premises gateway, data gateway, and that lives in your corporate network. There's no, no, no ports open to go back in. This, this little service uh, manages the connectivity up to the cloud and uh, will we'll, um, uh, address any of the requirements to be refreshes of data. Um, there's a push mechanism rather than a pull through from the cloud. So um, it's, it's a very secure manner to be able to have that data available to you uh, in the Power BI service and keep it up to date. So that's sort of it from a, a how does it all hang together, moving parts. So what about all the scenarios that we want to consider Power BI in the organization? I mentioned personal BI before, where you might deploy the uh, Power BI desktop, use it for yourself, you can publish that into Power BI, but it's in a limited workspace. You can't share that with anyone. Um, the good thing is, 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 is low cost. In fact, the download for um, uh, Power BI desktop is, is free and you can store it. Um, can't share, but then there's limited gateway connectivity. It's called a personal um, uh, data gateway. It has to run on your machine and you can't share that, make use of that across the data sources. You might be restricted to access your corporate data. Uh, which I expect would to be in most, most organisations in the case. So beyond that though, how do we then start collaborating? And so the team collaboration scenario is when we then are able to publish, author and publish that and share across a team of people. Uh, in this model, you have the full gateway features and the licensing is a per user. So if you've got a team of you know, 20 people, you could license everyone individually and publish that uh, once and all 20 could then access that report. Um, and that's great for those small teams who have it all different purpose, might be like a management level reporting, the joint or sales level reporting or share with a subset of the organization. However, when you, there's also a tipping point when you have enterprise level distribution, where you want to then publish beyond then a set group of people. Um, and that will that tipping point will be based on that demand or the use cases you have, or it might be based on the cost and price to then, you know, a, a point where it may not be practical to individually license, you actually get your benefits by licensing across the enterprise. Um, and so that allows you to publish a Power BI, has a very large number of um, view consumers or viewers of those reports versus those that will be preparing and authoring. And so it's an enterprise license. It's, we'll go into the license details in a moment. These two scenarios uh, are less common, but they're relevant because um, we do hear them from time to time. The first is um, uh, embedding, embedding for your customers or your partners in your own applications or portals. So why would you do this? Now, typically when, we've, when, when people have created their own custom applications for a self-service for their customers or partners, they'd have to have the developers create these sorts of reports and dashboards for them. Instead of investing all that time and energy into developers doing it and maintaining that, which isn't easy, um, you can leverage the Power BI service, create them through the same authoring experience and publish that and have it embedded within your application. And there's a great uh, user experience for that. You can control the parameters. And so it's very, it looks exactly like your application with those, those visuals coming through. Uh, overall, reducing the time for you to create and manage those uh, reports. The other one I mentioned before was around the on-premise deployment. It is an alternative, um, doesn't include all features, uh, but it's a provide with hybrid flexibility where you are maybe on your journey to cloud, but still need to have uh, this function residing in a corporate network or in your data center. Um, warning though, unlike the cloud service of Power BI, which is updated monthly, 
the release cycle on Power BI reports server is about three times a year. So, and it does lag um, compared to what gets released in the cloud as well. So I want to then touch on a bit about how do you license that? So what are the what are the core constructs that you uh, or elements you think about when licensing Power BI? So we have the Power BI desktop. There's no license required for that. Then we which is which is which is great. And let's look then then the Power Power BI online. There's a few different ways that you can license it. Let's start with the, probably the most common, the most basic, which is Power BI Pro. So Power BI Pro is a per user per month subscription. So you pay a, a figure per month um, to use that service. Um, now it's a standalone um, a, a purchase you can make through your LSP of Microsoft, or if you have a Microsoft N365 and Office 365 E5 subscription, you have Power BI Pro already. So you can start using that if you have that uh, entitlement. And that's, this is the license that's really good for that team level collaboration. Now, uh, contra to that, when we're talking about enterprise-wide, we have Power BI Pro for that individual licensing. We have Power BI Premium for whole of organization. And instead of being a per user, it's about a per capacity per month subscription. And by capacity, it's really a, a level of compute. So remember, uh, you know, cores and RAM that are dedicated, managed as a, a cloud SaaS service to you, to use um, for, for whatever you need. Now there are multiple sizing options available. So it allows you to grow into this as well. You can start off with a very low tier, and as your reporting demands dictate, we need to add extra uh, compute capacity for that reporting. You can then scale that up as needs dictate. You still need, uh, even though it's enterprise wide, it's enterprise wide for the consumption and viewing of that data. You will still need a Power BI Pro per user licensing for anyone authoring and publishing content uh, into, into the Power BI service for people to consume. Now, there may be times also where you don't need to step up to that next level capacity, but you have some peak demands on and off where you might want to you know, increase some um, you know, compute requirements for your analytics purposes. There's a new feature, um, I think it might be in general availability now, I don't know if you can, I can't remember Blair or not, uh, where it's released, but this auto scale is an add on you can also turn on that will, that will actually monitor your usage and it reaches a threshold, scale up the compute for 24 hours and then dial it back. So if you have that burst um, reporting requirements, might be you know, end, of, end of month or end of year type of reporting um, where there is more demand, you can uh, you know, bring up and down uh, quite effectively and just scale up to the next tier. Now the premium also includes additional features that are not available when you go to Power BI Pro, and I've got those covered uh, on the next slide. Now, for a lot of organisations, this is where Microsoft was um, until very recently. You had Pro, which had uh, you know, for individuals, you had Premium for enterprise-wide, but the feature, some people wanted the features in Premium that they couldn't get in Pro. So at about Easter time, uh, I think it was April this year, Microsoft made generally available Power BI Premium per user. Power BI Premium per user, also referred to as Power BI PPU, uh, brings in a per user per month subscription model for the premium features. But only those licensed with a Power BI Premium per user subscription can access those features, or if they're in a Power BI Premium um, capacity. So it gives you a flexibility where you have some of the features you need, but not for the whole organization. Um, for a small subset, it is a cost-effective way to be able to bring those in. And again, you can, build, you can license that as a standalone, or if you have that Office 365 or M365 E5 entitlement, you can then purchase an add-on on top of that um, to give you access to that Power BI Premium per user um, license. Now, if that wasn't enough to think about, we also have the Power BI Embedded I mentioned before. Now, Power BI Embedded uh, gives you the same features as Premium, but operates a little bit differently. It's an Azure service and gives you the ability to have per hour pricing. So when you've got a application um, and you might have peak times during the day, you can, you've got flexibility to scale up capacity, scale down capacity, or if you don't have customers or partners using it on say weekends or public holidays, you can turn it off and you're not um, have any um, consumption uh, going against your meter as well. 
So it's an interesting model to allow you to provide some of those premium features or uh, in any Power BI feature, but a real flexible model for our specialized use cases in that way. And there's a few, you know, look up a clients who are certainly exploring that as well for their own application purposes. And so that really wraps up, I guess, the cloud options available we have. So the pro individual licenses, you have the premium for whole organization, but if you want per user with the premium features, you go Power BI premium per user. And you can mix you know, the pro and premium per user up as well within your organization or go a Power BI embedded, that's the case. The other option I wanna talk about is a Power BI report server. Power BI report server uh, allows you to uh, license, uh, run this in, in your data center. So if you have a Power BI premium subscription, you are entitled um, to use, with some, some, some nuances to it, you use the Power BI report server in, in your corporate network. If you have that subscription already, there's some, and there's, there's a reading on that available to you. Alternatively, if you have SQL Server Enterprise Edition Core with Software Assurance, you are also able to um, turn on Power BI Report Server as well, up to the number of calls you have licensed. A little caveat on this: if you have the Power BI Premium, you can deploy on premises. If you just have SQL Server Enterprise with Software Assurance, you deploy on premises. But you don't get you entitled to a Power BI Premium subscription. So it's a, just something to watch out for there. Uh, I'm just conscious of time, a little more conscious to go through, but um, I'm just gonna put this on the screen and talk to it briefly. Um, yeah, the question, other question we get is, well, what do we go? Do we go Power BI Pro or go towards that, or a premium either with a per user or per capacity? Um, and it really depends on what some of those features are. And there is a long list and that's on the, on the link below that we send out, but these are the core ones that come up in the conversations that we have. Um, one of the ones is around page, almost all the time around paginated reports. And if, if you're familiar or, or seen sort of the financial type, you know, profit and loss type reports that are tabulated, um, they're the types of paginated reports and multiple pages and you don't you know, put those into a PDF and, 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 and prior going you would print those out as well. Um, that feature is only available either in one of the premium, premium uh, either per user or capacity uh, options. Uh, as well as on the model size limits, um, certainly you can, build bigger models with a, with a premium um, subscription license. And the other key one is around the refresh rate. So if you would like a, rather than sort of once an hour, which you get with Pro, which might be suitable for your scenario, if you need something more, more, more frequent, then, a, then 48 times a day um, is, is available as well. Um, on, on those refresh rates, there are also real-time options with Power BI. We even, we're not gonna to touch on today, but if you have real-time requirements, there are things you can do with Power BI as well. But if you're updating data from a um, your corporate data sources, they are refresh rates. You can then do those um, refreshes on. The other ones around data flows, and pipelines are really for an enterprise scale where you want to be able to uh, manage between different environments and or manage the data connectivity. And the last one's around advanced AI, that's like the machine learning that we'll talk about in a future session, is available with a with a Power BI premium um, subscription. So to wrap the section up and some takeaways, you know, how do I best license Power BI? Uh, as I said, your business drivers, the use cases, and the constraints around your technical and economic factors uh, will, be, will be key to seeing what that looks like. Um, there are lots of different deployment licensing scenarios available. That white paper I mentioned, I encourage you to look at that. It's not easy reading, but certainly it does cover a lot in there. Um, and depending on your agreements, you know, different pricing may apply. Um, so certainly check with your, your LSP around what you may, options may be available. And uh, I really recommend um, you know, conducting an assessment and seeking professional advice. That's where we have a team at Data3 um, that, that, that specializes in licensing um, for our customers and they are to get the uh, understand your scenario better and um, uh, help you advise correctly the best way to license Power BI. So let's see, what we want to do, we know that you know, when I've seen a lot of clients who've gone in investment of Power BI and deployed it, but it's not just a one-time event. Um, and certainly more considerations around just deploying a tool that we want to just, just touch on briefly um, to make you aware of those. So you can think about that when you go on your own, own journey as well. Um, so we've got five of these to just take you through. The first really is around you know, getting clear on your business objectives. Um, yeah, you know, a lot, a lot of pressure from leadership and organisations to be able to provide capability around analytics and reporting. Um, but we understand it's not an overnight 
piece. There's actually a lot of work that needs to go into data, data preparation, building reports, uh, maybe the architecture support that, publishing, consuming, and, and, so, and so on. And that will take time to you know, develop more and more as, as, the, as the needs demand. So we recommend uh, developing a roadmap um, to help you understand, well, what we, what's laying through, what do we need to achieve short term, medium term, long term, and then know well, where those will fit. And it helps provide the organisation a clear path around, you know, we'll start off with reporting with a small department and build it out across enterprise over a period of time, as an example. Blair, I'll, I'll hand over to you to talk about the, uh, the next consideration, please. Okay. So um, anyone who's ever talked about modern data warehouse to be familiar with this sort of diagram, but um, I'm not here to talk about modern data warehouse. I'm talk, here to talk more about when you should consider using something like a data platform versus pulling from Excel, SharePoint or CSVs. So what one thing I see a lot and try to help customers understand is when to get data from CSV, Excel, SharePoint, all those sort of small sources or even transactional databases in some essence versus when you should actually build that data platform, build out your data warehouse um, and have your, your, your proper sort of reporting structure. It's not a hard and fast rule, but I have got kind of a, a, a bit of a, a list for you, I suppose. Um, so it's sort of if you want to get something up quickly with what you currently have for a small audience and all you have is CSV, Excel, some transactional, and, and there's only a team of say five people. Go ahead, use what, use what you've got, do your transformations in Power BI, build your reports out. Just keep in the back of your mind, if you want to scale this up and start rolling out to entire business, it will not scale well. Um, can you jump to the next slide, please? So I'm going to simplify this to a bit of a checklist. So if you answer yes to any of the following, then you probably should also consider building that data platform. So if you want any sort of change catcher around, around your, your um, tables or your files or any change capture at all, you want to capture when something changed in a table. If you want to conform a table, so this might be um, you have this, a, this, a similar concept across multiple databases, but it's got all different codes. So you want to conform it to one centralized table. So when you report, you want to be able to report these six databases seamlessly sort of together under one say, organization code or business code. You need a data warehouse for that. If you want a, um, if you want a an architected for reporting, so like a star schema, that's a da that's data warehouse functionality. If you're if you're looking little er if you're looking little sort of practice areas, so team of five, team of ten, Power BI straight off Excel, straight off SharePoint, that that would work fine. But if you're looking to rolling this out, or even if you're looking at potentially rolling it out in the future. Look at your data platform. So what I've got here is your wider data platform. If you're talking about complex transformations, so Power BI is great at doing transformations, but like with any sort of coding language, the more complex it gets, the harder it gets. And when you start talking extremely complex calculations, it is a lot easier to do in the T-SQL than it is to do in the DAX. And if you if you going to go down the route of streaming data, IoT, or machine learning, you need that data lake in place, guys, which is again part of a data platform. Or if you're if you start talking um, extremely complex reporting requirements, it might be easier to push back some of that functionality into the data warehouse. So there's less less complexity in Power BI and more in the data warehouse. So um, what I try what I tried to show you on that diagram was how it all tries to tie together. So just briefly, you've, you've got your on-premise, your, your cloud sort of sources, they pull in through data factory land in the data lake, data warehouses, synapse, and then Power BI reports off synapse. I won't go into any details, so we can jump to the next slide. 
<laughs> Sorry, could jump the gun there, Lee. Um, just going to we uh, five minutes left in the session. We've got probably uh, three a couple more slides of content uh, and cover off, and then we'll get to Q and A. If anyone wants, we'll stay around for a bit. Um, around I guess, uh, the considerations around encouraging usage, um, and really to summarise this, um, yeah, it's, it's very easy to deploy things out, but and, and have this the goals of you know, self service, but really need to think about how are our users going to adopt this and things like. You know, creating the right literacy through data literacy through organization, training, awareness, and comms are key key parts that to think about when um, your analytics deployment with something like Power BI. Jump back to you, Blair, to maybe summarize this one, please. Okay, so I touched briefly on the security model. Um, the security model can kind of be broken into two areas. You've got your workspace roles. So within a workspace, you've got admin, member, contributor, viewer. Your admin is your, your admin within that workspace. So create, delete. Um, member is a content admin. The difference here is the admin can modify the workspace. They can, they can delete the workspace. The member can only modify and delete the content within that workspace, so the reports. Contributor, that is someone who can create reports. And then a viewer, they can just view the reports. They can't edit them. So that's within the workspace. And then if we jump over to the other side, we have the security. So this is row column object. So this is within the data set and the report itself. So um, you'd use row level security if you need a single report, but you need to restrict the data, the data within that report based on a user. So you might have a table saying, this user here is allowed to see data related to this, to this object. And then that data will then be restricted to it. Column is more of a show or hide a column based on a user. And object, so object is a new one, well, reasonably new that Power BI has rolled out. And this is around showing or hiding a column or a um, table. If anyone's ever used um, analysis services multi dimensional and they've ever sort of played around perspectives, Object is pretty much that. You can choose what, what tables you're going to show to what users and what columns you're going to show to what users. Right, and then we'll talk a bit more about this in an upcoming governance session as well. We've got in the series a bit more around some security trials you want to consider. Uh, and, and finally, uh, this is a consideration, this is not an exhaustive list, but certainly one of the key things we see is once you have deployed something like Power BI, how do you then manage that going forward? How do you, uh, what policies do you have, processes do you have in place um, to help, you know, not just you know, with, with people using it, but also to then you request the reports or bring in new data sources and the like. So the way you do things and how you bring it together. And something like a center of excellence, center of excellence, building that as a way to manage it is a good way, a good thing to consider as part of the overall deployment strategy for, for Power BI as well. So, um, thank you for sticking with us uh, right towards the end. Um, there's, there's a lot more to come in the next three sessions as well um, that uh, I talked about at the start and on the screen now. But I did want to get through to q and I think there's at least one a question there uh, we'll get to in Mr. Jiffy. But uh, the offer I wanted to uh, up everyone on, on, the, on the call today, look, we understand it's not easy. And uh, when you've got a lot of options available to you, I think it's just some complexity through what we've been speaking about. Um, so how do you how do you do that? And so we've uh, assessment we've developed for 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 organisations like yours to help you on that analytics journey. And uh, for for those who are interested, happy to if you'd like to complete an online assessment form, I've just put the uh, the link there on the screen. You can scan that or, or use the URL that's listed there as well. Um, online assessment form. It's 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 only you know, three short pages of, of a few questions there. We'll review that. We'll uh, we'll school code report we use to summarise information and develop some recommendations, and then we'll book a one-on-one, -on -one, thirty-minute session with you to go through that in more detail um, and maybe answer more of your context and provide some, you know, just follow some recommendations around where you're at and what you might want to do next as well. So, I very invite everyone who is interested to know more about uh, applying about Power BI if you're using it already, but you want to go to the next stage, um, then that's this is a really great way to think about that and then. Um, you know, take action around helping you build your analytics capabilities for yourselves. And with that, um, 
final thank you for attending today. Um, our contact details are on the screen. The link to that offer is, is there as well. Um, uh, I can offer for any, any Q&A. Marcel, is there any, um, anything there that's come through for, for Blair or I, please, just to... Uh, yes, B, thank you for uh, mentioning that. Um, I, I think it's not a surprise that, that the question I have here, it really goes back to the roles and permissions uh, in, in Power BI. Uh, so one of our attendees asked, when sharing reports, can the user modify the data source? Um, so I don't mm -hmm. know if that's a, probably a question for Blair. Yeah. Okay. So you have your your data sets which source your data from your data source and then your reports of your data set. The data source is configured separately. So the user that will be creating the data set will probably have read access to that, your, your source databases. So you, you won't be able to modify those. Now, if you're referring to data source as a data set, so that's the, the model which is built within Power BI, whether a user creating, a user sharing or who's had a report shared to them can modify that or not, comes down to the permissions of how that report was shared. It's actually an option on when you share, when you share whether to let them modify it or not. Right. Okay. Any other questions, Marcel? That's um, come through. No, no, that's that's it at the moment. So we maybe leave it open for another minute for any other questions that are. So questions can be posted in the in the Q and A on the, the side of your of the presentation you see. Right, and just while it gives, gives some time, um, yeah, the next session we've got, which is around you know, governance, we'll explore some uh, security uh, options available to you. Um, there, there's governance with tools like Azure Purview, which is a, a new, new tool that was released back in um, last month in September. That's uh, quite exciting to help you provide you know, discovery around your data source, understand because we also discovering the reports and dashboards you have deployed and the lineage and how it tracks together. So that will be really interesting to show you as well. Um, and that's just you know, some of the things we can, you know, really important things. And the data, other data governance pieces, just think that's some of those processes and policies. So we'll touch on some of the best practices around governance and Power BI as well in the next session. Uh, anything else, Marcel, that's come through in that time? If not, uh, we'll uh, wrap up. No, nothing has come through. So uh, it's time to wrap up. All right. Thank you very much. We don't think time isn't too bad, three minutes over. Um, again, thank you for attending today um, and I hope that was useful. Certainly, uh, once we send the stuff out, any feedback, any further questions, please reach out um, uh, to us. We're more than happy to assist. Have a great rest of the day and we'll see you at the next event. Thank you, everyone.